So today we celebrate St. Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Now this has traditionally been the feast day of St. Martha, from Memorial St. Martha, but then Lazarus and Mary have been joined to her, which is great because, as Dr. Bergson was saying earlier, strong probability that they were living together in a house doing charitable works, celibate siblings. And historically, within the teaching of the church, within the fathers, we have this strong tradition of Martha as active service, Mary as contemplative prayer. And today, so the team, the speakers, we get to be Martha, you get to be Mary, I don't know who gets to be Lazarus. (laughs) I don't want to try any resurrections today. (laughs) But we could trust in their goodness because they were friends of Jesus. They became close friends of Jesus, and they invited him in, at least on two occasions. Second time when Lazarus, well, three. So again and again and again, he would stop by their house. And it's this beautiful witness of people who invited Jesus into their home and served him and were close to him. And I personally identify pretty closely with St. Martha because I sometimes get stuck in the tasks. I get lost in the tasks and the purpose and sometimes can lose sight of the bigger picture. But how Jesus instructs her today is so loving and so patient. Because, okay, Martha invites Jesus in. She sees this wonderful man, this man that she wants to learn more of and open her home in hospitality. But she may have gotten more than she bargained for. Okay, so it's Jesus, but it's also the 12, and it's maybe the 72, and maybe it's everybody else who wanted to come too. And they didn't have microwaves or takeout. Okay, so Martha is trying to prepare food and drink for who knows how many people, and Mary is just sitting there. I I can see myself getting a little agitated too. But Jesus, okay, so if we look at Jesus, he never got frustrated or concerned or worried about not having enough food or drink. That was not a problem that Jesus faced. The disciples did, but Jesus didn't. And so he is reaching to Martha and he speaks to her, Martha, you're anxious and concerned about many things, but only one thing is necessary. And this one thing is to be with the Lord. So we see this message in the gospel, but we also learn this lesson in Exodus today. Moses has taken the instructions of the Lord, and the people and Moses together have constructed the tabernacle. They've assembled it, and the glory of the Lord comes down. And Moses can't even go in because the cloud and the glory are so intense and powerful that he cannot go in. And the lesson is whenever we've made adequate preparations and the Lord comes, we should stop working for a bit and enjoy the Lord's presence. Because who knows, maybe Moses was there and he's like, oh no, there was some dust off my feet the last time I walked in and the glory came down and I can't sweep it out. Or perhaps as we experience maybe in ourselves, I'm reading scripture, reading along, reading along, and then there's this moment, and I keep reading. And overlook the presence of the Lord in that passage that I just read over. And so the encouragement is to sit with that. It would be almost as if, to paint a picture here, in the middle of the homily or the middle of the Eucharistic prayer, the sacristans come up and they're ironing the altar cloth. Okay? That's not what we're about right now. That work is done. It might not have been 100% perfect in our perception, our perspective, but the Lord invited. The Lord has given the grace. And then there was a response. And the Lord came. And at that point, that's enough to rest in the presence of the Lord in that moment. And so I would say the example of Martha and Mary later on, seems like Martha may have been a little bit better at this whenever they hosted a feast for the Lord before he headed on to Jerusalem for his crucifixion. Martha was serving at table, but Jesus didn't correct her that time, so maybe she was a little more attentive to Jesus. But to look at it and see their example as 
how we are called to serve and to trust in the Lord, to be in his presence, to receive his love, to love him back, to not get stuck in the details, but to see the big picture of where we are. Right here, right now, we're in the liturgy. We're receiving Jesus in the words of the gospel and the words of scripture and that great richness. Because as Scott said last night, Exodus was not about just leaving Egypt. Exodus is about worship. Exodus leads to worship. And so our Exodus leads to worship. So to not get stuck in the things that we have to do or maybe which workshop you're going to this afternoon, even though they're probably awesome, or what you're going to have for lunch. Don't worry, you'll eat. (laughs) Jesus isn't concerned about that. But to trust and immerse ourselves entirely in the richness of what he's giving us right now, right here, those intentions that we have in our hearts, to place them on the altar as the altar is prepared, to entrust them entirely to the Lord, to know that he's in control, and we're here with him. And then as we receive him in that Eucharist, as we receive him into our hearts as Martha received him into her home, and to be present to that, to be present to him, and then he will transform us. He will take care of everything else. He will guide us in that process of discipleship, even when it doesn't seem perfect in our eyes but we can look to him and trust in him. That he'll make up for what's lacking. He'll multiply the food and drink for everybody else who came along who we didn't expect. He'll take care of the, the sorrows that we have as Lazarus later on is raised from the dead. It's beyond our comprehension at times. But the Lord is in control. So as we continue in this liturgy, Let's place our hearts here, now, in this moment and ask the Lord to guide us, help us to trust more deeply and to receive, prepare our hearts to receive him all the more deeply.